So in uh, developed uh, countries, these are the old welfare state sort of type people, um, uh, countries, um, the, the big uh, change shift in thinking has been the shift from the welfare state to the social investment state. And uh, this came about uh, at the beginning of this century, really. Um, it got underway, and it's fully, a fully blown model now. Um, but it was through a recognition that uh, once upon a time, we, we had a lot of things worked out with the welfare state and the full employment, Keynesian. Then in the 1980s and 90s, lots of change, uh, not just economic change, but uh, family change and ageing societies. Uh, the economy was moving a bit away from manufacturing to the knowledge economy. All of this is a whole new complex of issues making up the social question. So uh, scholars um, uh, got together to say we need, uh, uh, we need a, a new social model for the, to meet the new social risks, right? So uh, I won't go through them, but um, uh, it's, um, it's signature, signature uh, policies was the social investment in human capital. So we're moving into the knowledge economy. It's a bit like our old friends in the 19th century. Uh, if we wanted people to be able to take the opportunities and become part of the economic uh, and the social mainstream, um, then education and schools is the vital thing. So uh, that has all been worked out in a full uh, policy framework, addressing uh, 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 like the life course um, from the early learning, the importance of the early years, investing in that, um, through to the uh, schools and the, the transitions to work, uh, transitions into caring and the family in and back when, from the labour market to home, home back to the labour market, lifelong learning and uh, all of that. So that was the first thrust that instead of seeing welfare as kind of some sort of tax and transfer handout while everything else will look after itself, um, uh, we have to have a, a, a social investment framework uh, to address the needs of citizens through their life course. That was, so that's been one big enduring uh, policy development which is, shapes the way we think about the social question today. The other one uh, comes uh, from, as I say, from the developing countries and just uh, maybe if I give you a picture rather than all the words here, uh, like the, the, the idea of inclusive growth uh, responds to the fact that um, just um, uh, 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 growth by itself doesn't not going to automatically translate into better opportunities for all the people. All right? And so this can be dramatic, like if you've got some country where the, the, the king or somebody owns the, own the resources of the gold mine or the diamonds or whatever, and he doesn't care about what happens to all the peasants in the, uh, in the paddock, uh, then that's an uneven development. How do you get these other sectors growing? You go to China and you've got the people in the cities participating fully in the great transformation uh, to manufacturing China. Then you've got the other half or even more still living in the old lifestyles uh, back in the rural. So this is the big aspiration of inclusive growth. How can governments manage the pattern of development so that it's even and gives all citizens uh, their opportunity. All right, so, um, okay, so that's, uh, uh, th these, two, uh, these two trends uh, have come together now, like we started off talking about the UN and the new model. Uh, those two ideas have fed into this. And so what I want to emphasize from that is, uh, uh, is um, the way that it's so different to um, if we were asking about the future of social policy a decade ago, it would have been, uh, can we increase the unemployment benefit? Or some people today say, oh, we'll give the, a guaranteed minimum income. Um, like this is, that was the idea of welfare. Maybe we'll need a bit more taxation to pay for these handouts. So that sort of, uh, 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 we've got to leave behind uh, that sort of thinking about social policy as consumption and get back to the idea that if we want to really want to change our society, we have to socialise production 
as much as that. Uh, we don't want to disparage consumption, but if we're not socialising the production, then we won't be moving towards the more equal society. So. Uh, if you pick up um, uh, uh, some of the, the reports or studies and people trying to operationalise this and make it happen, like the World Economic Forum, I'll just run, list off the things. You know, if we're going to do social policy, put social policy at the centre of the economy, and we're not talking about welfare, what are we talking about? Education and skills, employment and labour conditions, wages and all of that. Uh, opportunities for entrepreneurship and asset building and home ownership, uh, the role of banks in the finance sector is it really supporting the real economy, uh, basic services and infrastructure. There is taxes and uh, uh, transfers, but as the World Economic Forum itself said, um, socialising production in this way is far more important for inclusion than uh, just taxes and transfers. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty heavy going, isn't it? Especially when you could be watching the cricket. 